Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to introduce you to Lucian Tarnowski from United Kingdom. He is a very young, energetic IT person, which many of you may remember, especially young ladies. He is the one <laughs> who set up the Facebook application for the recruitment of this One Young World delegates. In addition, he is also behind uh, a website called bravenewtalent.com, which is a new social recruiting platform that builds social media communities for employers. And he strongly believed in global health care, and he believed that education is the key to global health care. And he links up his, uh, his IT skills with education and global health care quite well. And he is one of uh, the winner of the Global Enterprising Young Breed of 2009. And he is also a finalist for a Young Entrepreneur of the Year and also in the top 10 young entrepreneurs to watch in the year 2010. And And in his free time, he runs for a charity called Take Heart India, where this charity provides IT skills and guarantee for uh, jobs for blind students in India. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lucien. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I, I don't quite know how I can follow that, but um, can I just start today with a, with a show of hands um, to, to get a bit more interaction in, in this talk, because I get very nervous when I start. Can you please show your hands if you believe that access to good quality health is a fundamental human right? Right, I think this resolution is going to get passed, but and can we have a second show of hands if you think that access to a good education is a fundamental human right? Right, so this is the theme of my talk today. Um, my message is really simple, that before global health comes global education. I think education is absolutely key to this subject. Uh, prevention is always better than a cure. Now to me, take the example of AIDS. There's 35 million people in the world today with, with AIDS or HIV positive. And 50% of all new infections are in our generation, people born since 1984. Uh, think what education can do to change that. I think prevention is key. And I think we need to foster uh, a, uh, a global prevention culture uh, to, to, to change this, which is all based on education. Prevention starts with education. My message is really clear. Everything starts and ends with education. Education, education, education. Everything starts and ends with education. <laughs> to me, education is key to someone's health. It's absolutely key. Without, without an education, you can see the, the connection between illiteracy and, and poor health in terms of mortality rates, in terms of uh, sexually transmitted diseases, all sorts of things. The connections are very much there. So if we want to make an impact, the best way to start is with education. And really, that's the theme of my talk today. The key aim to, f uh, to look at is how can we ensure that all young people have got access to good quality education that will then impact on health. In light of this, I propose that we make one minor change to, this, to the resolution. I propose we insert the word education. I propose that we uh, change the resolution to the following. In the belief that all humans have the right to healthcare, nutrition, and education, we call upon businesses, governments, and civil society to work together more efficiently to prioritize spreading information and, and, uh, about and providing access to good healthcare, nutrition, and education. I think it's absolutely key. If we forget education from these resolutions, I think we've missed something that underpins every single resolution. So I've been lucky enough to have first-hand experience of the impact of education on, the, on healthcare. Um, my father, who I'm indebted to for showing me so much of the world and making me really the uh, person I am today, 
was the longest running supporter of an amazing man called Baba Amte in India, um, and he, he, who, who's established the world's largest leprosarium. Now, my father tells me stories of how he remembers in his lifetime uh, with leprosy patients, um, the stigma that was attached that was entirely due to lack of education. Um, at best, they were disowned from their families and thrown out of their communities. But at worst, my father tells me stories of them being buried alive, uh, people being buried alive just for having leprosy. Um, since the age of 19, I've run Take Heart, the, the charity my father started. And we've got the motto, uh, work builds, charity destroys. We provide practical education so people can get themselves jobs. And I've seen firsthand people, uh, once they've got this education, they can lift themselves up permanently out of poverty. And they can then provide themselves a good quality of, of health care. Now, why is this important? Uh, first of all, there's lots of us. There's over 2 billion of us. Uh, of, of, of the one young world generation, people born since 1984. Uh, that's one third of the world's population, but the gap between rich and poor is growing. Inequality it, with healthcare and education is there. And we are a generation, the ultimate generation of haves and have nots. The solution, what is it? Yes, it lies with government, with business and civil society, but what about us? We are the generation of, of social media. We are the Facebook generation, the Google generation, the net generation. We have this tool. Now, how can that impact on global healthcare? We've got this access at our fingertips. We can be, my favorite quote, we can be geeks for good. Yeah, here's a cheer for geeks for good. Um, there's a, the digital divide needs to be bridged. We need to give access to information. The internet is an amazing opportunity uh, that we can use as a tool, and it gives people access to education. Uh, we need to be a generation of leaders to spread this and say it's a fundamental human right to get access to that information. How do we bridge this digital divide? We need more investment in that. We are empowered with this new tool. For the first time in history, we're an authority on something that actually matters the internet. Our parents weren't authorities on anything that mattered. They were authorities on train sets and bubble gum and football. Uh, now the internet actually matters and we get it best. So that makes our generation unique. The, the example of One Young World is perfect just in terms of the numbers of people that were engaged. 15 million touched, over 100,000 engaged. Two and a half thousand people want to be in your shoes right now all over the world in 140 countries. That was all through social media. Education can play a really key role. So my question is, these tools, how can they be used to increase global health and education? I have a dream around this with Brave New Talent. I want to create a global talent network, something that will show companies who wants to work with them before they apply, and let companies provide education to all, to all the people in their community uh, before they apply for free to give open access to education. That's a powerful, powerful impact on global health and the future. So we need to bridge this digital divide. We need to foster uh, uh, education for healthcare and for every other thing that we're discussing here at One Young World. Now, I've got a really clear message. Out of sight is not out of mind. It's very important that world leaders look at us and look at what's happened at One Young World. And it's very important that we, as delegates, come together and unite to be leaders on these subjects. Now, just to finish, I want to say let's be orange together. Let's be eagles together. And let's together be future leaders of the world. Thank you.